Hi everyone, Bob Dietrich here with another edition of the ADHD Toolbox. And I am really honored to have our guest, Jim West, on the program with us today. And I'm gonna tell you why in just a second. But Jim, uh, thank you for coming on our program. Uh, sure. Good to talk to you today. Good to be here. Yeah, good to talk to you, Bob. Uh, Jim's got an awesome uh, organization called Total Life Counseling. And um, uh, he's got some great programs on it. And one of the things that Jim is a, a specialist in is something called oppositional defiance disorder and um, uh, or ODD. And we're going to talk about that today. I'm, you probably have heard about it. We're hearing more and more about it. Um, and sometimes it gets mixed up with ADHD. And we're going to kind of um, uh, unpack this uh, so you can understand it deeper, understand what the difference is between ADD and ADHD and, and ODD. And, uh, and just kind of dive in. So uh, Jim, thank you for being here. Um, just for our audience's yeah. sake, you're a licensed mental health counselor, author of stresslessseries.com, which is a part of your video program, online videos, uh, video training. And you're the president of your, your organization, Total Life Counseling, which is located at totallifecounseling.com if you want to visit that. And uh, you're an ADD defiance expert. And you've been on local and national TV media, including ABC's Medical Minute, Fox News, OWN, and more mental health issues uh, for facing adolescents and families is what you cover. And we're super excited to have you here and to talk about this, this challenge because, you know, um, it, all too often ADD gets misdiagnosed. And we want to make sure that we diagnose the right thing and handle it so we can really get down to the root of what's going on for a child so they can uh, overcome the challenges. That's right. It's very important, Bob. Very important. Uh, well, you know, oppositional defiant disorder, you know, those are those kids, you know, that are often arguing with adults. They, they are, they're defiant. They cannot take responsibility. The, when you say it's black, they say it's white. If they say, if you say the sky is blue, they say it's red. You know, those, those kids are, and they, you know, they're typically, they have this type of behavior, very negative, you know, very angry, uh, irritable. Uh, you know, it's usually for like six months or longer when we, when we start to say, okay, this has been going on for a long time. They can be hostile. They uh, can be very touchy. They're easily annoyed, easily irritated. Uh, it's spiteful and vindictive at times. Sometimes, you know, just trying to punish whoever the authority is back or get them back somehow or, or embarrass them somehow or be mean back somehow. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's, it's a very challenging subgroup of kids in our society. So, um, so those are some of the, the ways it shows up, right? Like, um, yeah. like these, the, just to kind of being oppositional all the time. Um, yeah. And what, what age do you start to see this develop? I mean, usually, I mean, usually you can see it even in like pre-K and kindergarten, but it really starts to show up where, you know, in second, third grade when academically they have to sit down more, they have less recess, less opportunities to move. And uh, that's kind of when we start to see it, when they're having to sit down and do things they don't want to do, then they can be defiant. You can't make me. I don't want to. This is boring. You know, I want to do something else. I hate you. You know, when you start to hear those types of things, uh, you know, like around, like I said, when the, when they, like first and second grade, when they have to sit more and have less playtime and less coloring and crafts, you know, like in pre-K and kindergarten, it's just lots of fun usually, right? So when that fun stops and they have a lot more sitting down uh, time, that's, that's drives them crazy. That drives them nuts. Now, is this something that can be developed? Like, um, like, let's say you don't have it until all of a sudden you're 12 or 14, and then all of a sudden it starts to show up? Or is this something that, that, um, that shows up, it always shows up really young, you know, three, four, five, six years old, and then continues on from there? Right. So it can, I mean, it can show up later. Uh, one of the things that we look for is if there's ADHD that's unsuccessfully treated, or unsuccessfully diagnosed, mm -hmm. that is very important. So like if they have that, um, that can be, I mean, that's on average ADHD, if they're hyper, the hyper type of ADHD, that's like around second grade for boys, fifth grade for girls. Mm -hmm. uh, if they're just inattentive, it's seventh grade for boys. So when that's that 12, 13 years old you were talking about where all of a sudden they start to show those symptoms. I will say the inattentive type kids tend to not be defiant or you know, impulsive, or 
you know, they, they tend to be more just kind of chill, more laid back, fly under the radar. It's the hyperactive kids that if they're not treated soon and they're being made to sit down and made to do work, but they can't focus or they, or they can't uh, get the work done because they can't focus, or they're distracted by people talking around them or they're distracting the class because they're bored and they're trying to get up and walk around to stimulate themselves. You know, that kind of stuff gives them all kinds of negative feedback going back home. You know, your kid won't sit down. You know, the, the, the principal's calling the, teach, the, the parents. The, the teacher's calling the principal. The parents are getting mad at the kids when they get home. So they're getting, everybody's mad at them, right? right? And over time, it's like, you know, hey, what were you thinking? And if it's ADHD, Russell Barkley, I know you're going to have him on. Eventually, uh, he basically says, well, they weren't thinking, you know? And it's not a good to ask, what were you thinking? It's right. better to, to ask, tell me what happened. And let's try to understand what happened. But but anyway, so we look for ADHD that's unsuccessfully treated, anxiety, autism. They kind of sometimes can all come together or parents that are on different pages. Those are the things that, that we look for. Got it. Got it. So um, do you also find that it's a com comorbid um, uh, situation where they both coexist, ADD and yes. or ADHD and... Um, uh, it's a great question, Bob. Yes. Uh, so two thirds of uh, kids with oppositional defiant disorder have unsuccessfully treated ADHD or unsuccessfully diagnosed. Like, you know, so it can be diagnosed, but not successfully treated. And basically that means they're just gonna be getting in trouble so much. They're going to have more blame, more guilt, more shame than anybody's made to handle because they're going to get in trouble so much more. They don't have the luxury to think before they say things, you know, and so that's kind of where they've got to get that treatment, you know, for, for ADHD and then some parent coaching and put some structure in place for them. And then a lot of times we can see some of that defiance improve, you know, and go away. And so. Got it. Got it. Okay. It's, uh, yeah. It, it, yeah. It, so let's say you're a parent, right? Uh, you have a child, um, they have ADHD they've been diagnosed with it, uh, but you think that might, there might be an ODD situation also. Um, is, there, is there a different um, uh, way to um, address that? Or is it the same, do you do the same things as you would with ADD uh, or ADHD? You treat, the, you treat the root cause. You go right for the ADD. And when you do, then all of a sudden they're focusing, right? So we recommend their vitamins or diet. Uh, or medication. Um, and I think uh, Dr. Russell Barkley said that 90% of people after trying three medications, uh, three stimulants get a full clinical response. It's like a game changer for people. And all of a sudden they can focus. And when the teacher says to do something, they can process, well, I want to play. I want to talk to my, my friend next to me. I, uh, you know, I want to get up and go to the bathroom, but then they're going to process here, but I need to do my schoolwork first, if that makes sense. Right. Yeah. So, so that's where, you know, when they, when they fire up that, that's like their bridge, the prefrontal cortex is like a bridge to, you know, to the, to the logical reasoning side of the brain. And then they're, you know, and, and so they can process what they want versus what they need and all of us, and then start doing the work and turning in their homework and being more organized, you know, just by firing up that frontal lobe. Like I said, we, we recommend vitamins and one of our, like our stress less with ADHD and stress less with alternatives to medication um, program. Mm -hmm. uh, we're actually going to give away one of those programs free, I, I think at the end of the talk, right? Yes, so you guys will get a code from Bob and we want to give that to you guys to help you guys out with that. If you want to pick that program, but once you okay. treat that, that's a big, that's a big difference. And then, then all of it, then they're not getting less notes home. There's less negative feedback. There's less guilt and shame. And then all of a sudden they're, they're happier and, and they're able to uh, regulate their moods better and process how they feel. And I mean, it's just a game changer when you can fire up that prefrontal cortex. Awesome. So are you saying then that the treatment for ODD is to treat the ADHD with- That is if that's what's going on because that's two thirds of uh, oppositional defiant kids. The other- um, the other third is oftentimes parents on different pages or parents in different homes, like a broken home or a divorced family, where you have a parent, passive parent in one home and then a parent that's more restrictive at the other. Then I was, those kids become teenagers. The restrictive parent becomes the devil, becomes the enemy, becomes the, the mean parent. And the other parent, they, you know, they say like the Disney dad, 
you know, parent, you know, or Disney mom, you know, where they just don't want to fight with the kids or they're just tired or maybe have unresolved issues of their own uh, or just don't know what to do, how to help this kid. And so, uh, you know, and, and what, you know, what we like to tell people is that 95% of, like we tell parents, like 95% of kids respond to your traditional parenting skills, but this kid is in the other 5% they need a different approach. And so that's really important to, to do some parent coaching with those parents. Got it, got it. Okay, so, um, so really the, the, it sounds like the importance of, or the reason why you want to identify and distinguish ODD from ADHD is that um, for those kids that it's really not ADHD, it's ODD and, and there's a different way to handle that than, than with ADHD. Sure. Yeah, with a defiant kid, if you've got a permissive parent, the kids, I mean, any teenager is going to go toward the more permissive parent. I mean, when parents are, whether they're in the same house or not, you know, it's kind of like a, a triangle. You know, the triangle is supposed to be flipped this way where the parents are at each of the top two points of the triangle and the kids at the bottom listening to the parents. But when right. the parents are on different pages, it flips the, the triangle around now the kids in control while the parents are fighting. Mm -hmm. So we really want to get, we want to flip that back around. And, and, and find like, for instance, just last week I had a family that they're in, a diff they're in different homes and there was like five things the parents were, you know, not agreeing on. And I got the parents to agree on four out of five. Right. And I'm like, well, let's focus. Let's see what we can agree on and get, get them both to kind of come, come in a little bit. Right. And try to find like some common ground, you know, and like, I think one of them was, I think the dad just didn't want to make his son wear his helmet riding his bike because all the other kids were riding their bikes. He makes them ride it with a motorcycle, but not on an actual bicycle, right? And so, you know, I told the parents, look, the law is he's supposed to wear a helmet in Florida, okay? But, you know, I'm gonna leave that to you and your, you know, to, to your, you know, to, to the mom and the dad to just kind of work that out outside of the, because I'm not there to be the referee. I'm not there to enforce the law when it comes to that, helmets. But, but well, the cool thing was, is I got them to agree on four out of the five things. Then I brought the kid back in, had the dad tell the son, here's three things where you think your mom and I are not on the same page, but we are, right? And, and here's why. And here's why it's different from one house to the, to the next. Mm -hmm. and, and so he would describe, like for instance, the dad had a, like a private little lake behind his house and the kid was allowed to drive the boat. And he's like 12 or 13 years old. And he's like, mom doesn't let me drive the boat. Well, guess what? Mom lives on the ocean. And can you imagine a, a 13 foot boat, 14 foot boat in the ocean and just him driving off, right? I mean, it's just crazy. And the dad told him that. He's like, that's crazy. I would never let you do that, right? So having the, finding out where they're off on different pages and then, and the kid's mad because mom won't let me drive the boat and she won't let me do this. And she, you know, she's mean. So then I had the dad tell her that, that she was doing the right things. And so that was so powerful. And that flipped the triangle right? Where the parents now are saying, talking to each other and co-parenting and on the same page. Same thing with electronics. Mom was giving them 20 minutes on electronics. Dad's giving them an hour and a half. So the American Academy of Pediatrics says an hour. So I'm like, you know what? You're, you, you know, you, why don't we, so can we, can you give them an hour? I had the mom come in from 20 minutes to an hour and she said, yes. And then and I said, dad, could you do an hour as well? He's like, no problem. I can just make a little tweak on the parental controls. So then I got them on the same page. And then all of a sudden, the kid falls in line because now the parents aren't fighting or, or him trying to make, he was trying to make the parents mad at each other and trying to make his mom out. To be, and of course, he really wants to go to, he didn't want to go to his mom's house anymore. So probably because dad just bought the boat. I mean, he made it sound like he's been driving the boat for years. He just got the boat running about two or three weeks ago. And, and so he made me think it was for months. My dad lets me drive the boat. My mom doesn't trust me. And. And so, but when you get the whole story and like put the kid out of the office and talk to the parents and get them on the same page, bring the kid back in, right. all of a sudden now we got the parents working together and now the kid is like, oh, you know, like and he'll be mad for about a week or two. And I tell the parents it gets worse before it gets better and just be ready for that. But just stick to your guns. Because it does get better. Right. It's going to get better. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. You know, I mean, you hear it so often that 
the parents, they get divorced, there's a broken home, they're divorced for a reason, they don't like each other anymore, right? And it gets nasty. And sometimes the rules are are put in place uh, just to spite the other parent. And so, you know, I, I I hear the phrase, you know, my house, my rules. And that sounds like it's just a bunch of BS. It's what you're doing is you're setting up your child to basically play you off each other and get yeah. get what he's what he wants and 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 it flips that dynamic to, to yeah. Bob. That's a really good point. So there, that was a very unique. Well, I don't want to say unique situation. I just want to say sometimes it doesn't work that nice. Sometimes right. it's not that neat. You know, uh, sometimes I get them to agree on everything, and then sometimes I can't get them to agree on anything at all. And right. you're right that sometimes the parent, maybe one of the parents is mad that they had to get divorced and didn't want it, and he, they're just going to get that person back. Or maybe the parent has a personality disorder, and that's why they got divorced. And boy, if it's a personality disorder, that's really tough to deal with. Right. I mean, they're going to court. They're spending thousands of dollars in court and forensic evaluations and social investigations. And is this parent fit to be a parent and all this kind of stuff? And they'll spend all that money and still not get any control of that personality disorder parent. Not, you know, so it's, it can be really, that those are the really toughest cases where I, it's, I really don't feel oftentimes in those situations, I can actually help. I mean, the kid just comes in and talks to me where really I need to be talking to the parents and getting them on the same page. But if I can't, then we just do what's called maintenance, yeah. which is just talk to the kid, let them vent. And, but eventually the kids, when they become teenagers, they realize, you know what, I'm just coming here to vent, but nothing changes. Nothing gets any better. And that, so that's the other side of it. That's what's so frustrating. And then they become angry and defiant and, and get depressed and, you know, like you're, you know, talking about. So that is, the, that's another reality that's really hard sometimes. You know, it seems like more and more of these interviews that I'm, I'm, uh, I'm doing on the toolbox talking with over 60 um, experts now on this, uh, it seems there, there's lots of themes that come through. And one of the themes is that the children are a reflection of the parents, which is obvious, right? We could probably all agree on that. Uh, yeah. But we, we sometimes don't realize that when we see our kids misbehaving and we don't think it's us, right? right. And, so, and so often it's the parent, yeah. the adult. Well, that is what, you know, whenever we see personality disorder, oftentimes it's unresolved abuse in that parent's past and it just manifests that way. Mm-hmm. And they just, they just, whenever they feel pain, it brings up whatever that unresolved trauma is. And it's just too painful. So instead of accepting blame, they shift the blame. And then the kids learn to do that too. So it's like, I can't handle any more guilt or shame. And so I'm going to just let it overflow all over you. In fact, I talk about that with ADHD. So in this, I'll say maybe this is all the shame and guilt we're made to handle in a day, you know, and we, you and I, Bob, let's say I offend you. I'm going to apologize to you. Go, hey, let me make it up to you. Can I take you out? You know, I apologize. I was wrong. Let me make it up. Can I, can I buy you dinner? Can I take you out? Can I get you a Starbucks card? Let me, let me do something just to make it up to you. How can I make it up to you, Bob? And that's one of the things we do with Defiant Kids. We have them apologize. Make it up. A-M-C. Apologize. Make it up. This is on our Stress Less with Defiance video, okay? Apologize. Make it up. And C is an additional chore or task for that person, right? Well, it's really nice because then it's a quick re- resolution to that. And we, then we resolve it. We pour out the guilt. And we start all fresh again. Well, you know what? With kids with ADHD, they're getting in trouble at school in first period, in second period, in third period, in fourth period. And there's all this guilt. And then eventually the guilt like pours out all over Bob. It's Mm -hmm. your fault, Bob. It's your fault, mom. It's your fault, teacher. It's all these other people's fault. If you would have done this for me, if you would have done that, if you would have let me have my PlayStation, if you would have let me, all these different things that they'll say. And it's because they can only handle so much guilt. Once that's full, then it just out overflows all over the people around us. Does that make sense? Yeah, great analogy. Fantastic. Yeah. Uh, and, and uh, you know, a thing that's uh, what's occurring to me is that uh, so ODD gets resolved in two thirds of the cases with ADHD um, treatment. And in the other one third of the case, it's the parents that are having challenges within the family that's yeah. causing the kid to have these symptoms and mm-hmm. so it sounds like it's not really a disorder at all it sounds like it's more of a a uh, kind of just a, a situation yeah. where the kid is is trying to survive and and sure. you know use the only tools he has which is in this case manipulation to try and get the parents to give him what he wants 
Yeah. Well, you know, what happens is when it's on the ADHD side of things, if you get all that guilt and shame, and then it's like, it's like you feel, then they, they act on how they feel. So they feel like talking to their friend and then they get in trouble. And then they, then over here in the frontal lobe, it's like, oh, and then they feel remorse. Then they feel, act again, feel remorse, feel, act, remorse. But over time that gets old, right? And so then eventually they just go, you know, they just start, you know, like, I don't know what I was doing. What were you thinking? I don't know. I wasn't thinking. I'm so sorry. And, but you keep doing it over and over again. And then, and then eventually the kids eventually just go, you know what? I'm sick of apologizing. I'm sick of acting like I can't control it. I can't do anything about it. And then what they do is they just say, they just say, um, you know what? I did it because I wanted to, you know, because I'm in control. And, and the world, their worldview is so negative because the teachers are on my case. Every authority figure I have is all over me. And they treat these other kids really nice. And they're always singling me out. They're always watching me. And whenever there's a problem in the class, the other kids can point to me and I get the blame for it because I've been in trouble so much that the world's just not a nice place. And then there's all the cyber bullying, you know, that's not just one or two bullies in the school anymore. Now it can be the whole school bullying you online 24 seven, right? And, and so, and then they go home and then their parents are all over their case. And if it's a broken home, you know, you know, then, you know, so it's like, there's all this, so eventually they're just like, you know what, it's easier for them to say, rather than say, I can't control myself. I don't know what to do. It's easier just to say, I did it because I wanted to. Yeah. Screw you. You know? And it's just, you know, then they have a feeling like, okay, so I am in control and this is just who I am. And I'm just going to live up to this because everybody else is telling me how bad I am. And even my friends don't hang out with me anymore because the parents say, don't hang out with that kid because he's got bad grades or he's getting in trouble. He's making bad choices and he'll, they'll be isolated. And then who do they isolate with? The other kids that are doing the same things. And then they're more likely to do drugs or, um, you know, uh, commit crimes. Right. Right. So it's, um, yeah, it, it can lead to what's called conduct disorder if it's not successfully treated, which is basically legal problems. And it starts with defying the, the parent, then it's the teacher, then it's the, uh, the principal and the resource officer. And then of course that then gets them in trouble with the law. Right. So that's like the natural progression anyway. Yeah, it, can, it can spiral out of control, but yes. there are ways to handle it. Um, but yeah. before we go there, I wanted to ask, and I know the answer is pretty quick, but um, can adults have ODD? Sure. Yeah. I mean, if this is somebody with, with defiance, um, they, they really wouldn't call, I don't think they would call it oppositional defiance disorder. Really. They would call it more of a conduct disorder. You know, by the time it gets 18, they shift it to, uh, you know, so really it's kind of like yes and no. It's like, um, as far as the the diagnostic tool that we use, the DSM five, it's, uh, they would say conduct disorder. Once they're 18 and older, they would shift it to that because that's when they're having trouble typically with the law. Because the authority is at that point when you're 18 is who it's the law right. right right so so that's you know you know it could be their boss you know but if they defy the boss you know they you know if they're if they're aggressive if they're impulsive and aggressive with their boss you know then that can lead to legal problems as well you know be escorted off the property by the security guards or something right, like that right. which nobody wants oh, no. uh, all right. Well, let's. Uh, I, we're running out of time here, and I, uh, I know you have to go. And I want to thank you so much for spending this time. Um, I guess my last question is: What are some uh, techniques that people can use to overcome ODD? Let's say, you, you know, you, you know your child's got it. You think your child's got it. What do you do? How do you overcome it? So, so there's a few things. I mean, there's structure that needs to be in place. They need to know what to expect. They need to, you know, what time do I need to get up? What time do I need to do homework? What time do I need to have my chores done by? And then leave the video games or whatever it is they want to do for after that. Like dangle it in front of them every day. A lot of parents make the mistake of taking everything away and now there's nothing to live for in the mind of an ADHD kid or a kid with defiance. And so they need something to look forward to each day. They need to have a little bit of fun each day. So we need to dangle those things out in front of them. So it could be there, like when they get home, checking the phone, 
uh, do your homework or maybe take a 20 minute break when they get home, go kick a ball, no TV, no electronics, just go kick a ball, go, go ride your bike, do something physical, do some laps in the pool, go for a walk, walk the dog, do something physical, have a snack, take your vitamins that I recommend for, to, do, to focus for uh, the um, afternoon, I mean, for your homework and your chores, and then, uh, and then tell them, you know, hey, give them a reward. Like if, if you get your homework done before, mm -hmm. uh, before dinner, you can have an extra 15 minutes of electronics time, right? So, so put a structure in place and stick to it, and then you got a better chance. So make sure everything is done that you want done before you let them play or get or go outside a lot of parents are like oh well he told me he would do it later and i'm like well does he ever do it later does he ever do his homework later well yeah but it's like midnight and then i can't get him up in the morning and then we're fighting in the morning and he's grumpy all day and then he's falling asleep in class so you got to have a structure in play we also talk about tone like the four t's okay the four t's are tone watch your tone if you yell at that kid they're they're going to get so defensive so fast and get so mad. And the one with the most energy wins. Right. So we want to watch that. You want to watch triggers. You know, triggers are saying no. So if you have a structure in place and you, they want to stay up 30 minutes later than their bedtime, you say, well, what's your bedtime? It's nine o'clock. What time is it now? Nine o'clock. So what do you think you should do? Go to bed. Right. How about if they ask for their electronics? We have what's called when then. When you do your chores and your homework, you can, you can play. And I want you to play. I, I love to play. And I'll play with you if you want. I, I, you know, we, I love to play with you. So I want you to have this. You know, act like you're their friend and you want them to play. And so sometimes it's even better to say, yeah, yeah, sure. You can play your video games. What do you need to do first? Get them to come to the bad news. Get them to tell you the bad part, which is my homework, right? What do you need to do first? My homework, my chores, awesome. And when you do it, what happens? I get my video games. Yes, and I can't wait. And I know you'll knock it right out. So sit down here at the kitchen table with your screen facing the kitchen so I can see what you're doing and make sure you're not tabbing and, and going on YouTube. Make sure you're getting your work done. You're not hitting notifications and on Instagram and Snapchat, right? And so you can monitor their homework. The next thing is, the next T is threats. Be careful not to threaten them. If you threaten them, for instance, I had a lady, uh, she owned a restaurant and her son cussed at her in the restaurant. She said, if you cuss at me one more time, I'm going to slap you. And guess what he did? He slapped her. I mean, I'm sorry. He That's cursed it. and she slapped him right in front of everybody in her restaurant. And thank God nobody called the Department of Children and Family or, you know, Children's Services, right? So, you know, she could, she basically tried to tell him something she could not make him not do. So you got to be careful not to threaten something that you cannot make them do. And then also temporary insanity. When somebody's mad, when they're temporarily insane, when emotions are high, the ability to reason is low. When the emotions are low, the ability to reason is high. When they're up here, what we call temporary insanity, then they're not going to be able to process all that wonderful logic. You know, you're, you can wax eloquent and they're not going to be able to hear you. Okay. And so we have to, we have to, you know, use words like, wow, I can see you're upset. Well, duh, I am upset. And then of course parents will go, well, don't roll your eyes and say duh to me. And then they get mad again, instead of saying, right. Instead of just letting them vent, let them vent and be angry. And then when they calm down, we teach them ways to say, I was angry, you know, at you, I'm really sorry. Or mom, I need a few minutes, I'm mad at you. And let them walk away and do it in a respectful way rather than cursing and screaming and name calling. And then, you know, later having to apologize and do the AMC plan to make it up, right? Mm -hmm. So um, so, you, the th so create the structure and help them to just, you, you have to stick to it. If you fudge the, um, the curfew at night, you, you, you extend it, if you extend their bedtime, then guess what? They're gonna want it again the next day and they're gonna be so mad that you gave it to them one day, but you didn't give it to them the other. If you wanna give them a reward of staying up later by doing their homework before dinner, getting it all done, right? Then that's, that's a, good, uh, a good option too. But, uh, and then we, like I said, we talk about how trust is the glue in relationships. Kids with ADHD and defiance need a quick consequence and a quick get back to the, my privileges. 
So we have the everything builds trust or breaks trust. If you break trust by saying something mean, you apologize and say four character traits about that person. If they do something mean, they apologize and make it up by doing a chore for that person. So maybe it took five seconds to break trust by cursing or being disrespectful, but we can have them do like a five minute chore. So you do more than you did to lose the trust to rebuild it back. And then once that's done, hey, you know, then you can get back to your phone, you can get back to your PlayStation. So we did, that's kind of like, uh, you know, in other words, we don't even have to turn off the, play, the phone or the PlayStation if they agree in 15 minutes to do it. Mm -hmm. So if they're temporarily insane, we're gonna give them some time to calm down. Let me set the timer for 15 minutes. And when you calm down, if you make the right decision, because they're gonna go, I'm not doing a chore for you. I'm not gonna apologize, it's your fault, blah, blah, blah. Well, just say, look, when you, I'll give you a few minutes to calm down and you know the rule. And when you rebuild trust, we, you can resume your privileges. And if you do it in 15 minutes, guess what? I don't have to turn off your phone. I don't have to take your controller from your PlayStation. So I'll give you 15 minutes and I know you'll make the right choice. And you know, it sounds like uh, that can be tough conversation for parents because they don't want the confrontation. They don't want to be the bad guy. And mm -hmm. I think that's where parenting coaching comes in, which you guys yeah. offer. And, um, and if you're looking for more information, um, from this, the brilliant mind of Jim West, oh, you can go. Time. Yeah, you can go to totallifecounseling.com. I mean, Jim, you've been doing this a while and you got some really good stuff, everything from online programs to um, the counseling uh, classes, camps, all sorts of things. So definitely check out totallifecounseling.com. And, uh, and we'll be giving away a, a free gift. Jim is giving away uh, one of his online uh, programs, which is the um, it's Stress Less is the brand. So these stress less videos are the videos that you'll see on his, on his website. And, and if you go to stresslessseries.com, you'll see all these things. Um, your free gift today that you're offering is a defiance video and workbook, uh, which is awesome because this will help um, people that are looking for solutions and answers to ODD um, and trying to find out if their kid has it or maybe dealing with a problem. That's awesome, Bob. Thank you. You know, if people want, um, actually, there's a probably out of about 11 stress less videos we have, they were all designed for ADHD. But what like there's a company called Total Transformation that does a really good uh, job. And it's about a $300 program. Ours is about the same, but it, we actually just have it in segments because people may not need the entire program. So we have the stress less with alternatives to medication, stress less ADHD, stress less with defiance. So you can use the code that we're giving you for any one of the those um, okay. any one of those thirty five dollar programs. Okay, that's fantastic. So the links are below. The code is below. The coupon code that he's talking about is thank you thirty five all one word, um, all caps. So check that out. Uh, get your free gift below um, and uh, watch the videos. Do the workbook. I think you'll be happy you did. Yeah. Jim, thank you so much for being on our program today. This has been enlightening, informational, and you know, we could have talked on probably, you know, 50 different subjects, and this seemed like uh, the one we needed to talk about at this moment in time. So I appreciate well, thank you. Thank you again, Bob. You know, we, we also do Zoom video sessions just like this. So if you guys, you know, we've, we talk to people all over the world. So, and I've trained a lot of our staff, my approach. And so uh, just give us a call. We'd love to help you. Fantastic. Thank you again. And thank you all for watching this episode of the ADHD Toolbox. We'll see you on the next episode. Thanks, Bob. Thank you, guys.